Hi, my name is Beth Massey and today I'm going to show you how you can format data on the screens for better display and data entry using Visual Studio LightSwitch. LightSwitch is a new development tool for building business applications for the desktop and the cloud. LightSwitch makes it easy to create data-centric, rich internet Silverlight applications. This lesson picks up where we left off in the last video. We have a simple order management system with products, customers, their orders, and details. We've got a couple basic screens so far for searching and editing customers. So let's run the application real quick to see where we left off. So here's our search screen. Notice that when we click the, click the link on the last name, it opens up the screen we created in the last video for editing our customers. LightSwitch has already done a lot of formatting for us, particularly the labels on our fields. In the first video, when we defined the properties on our customer entity, we used camel casing, as you can see here. LightSwitch automatically puts a space between any camel cased um, camel cased fields for us. So in this case, first name and last name and postal code. Notice that we also specified that the email address and phone number are business types. So we get additional formatting and, um, and controls that are different. In this case, we have a control that's displaying the country code, area code, local number, and extension for phone number. For email address, if we don't enter a valid email address, we'll get an error. We didn't have to write any code to do this. We just selected the email address business type. However, what I'd like to do is I'd like to provide a default domain if one isn't provided here. What I'd also like to do is back on the search customer screen is you'll notice that the link is only displayed on the last name. I li would like this link displayed on last name comma first name. And also, also, I would like the first name displayed anywhere where we see customer, like here on this tab for our customer screen. So let's go ahead and see how we can do this. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to go back into the Entity Designer and specify some of this additional formatting and validation. What we can also do is we can specify some of the max lengths on our fields as well. Like for instance, state, we don't want to actually let the user type in that many um, characters into this field. So the better you describe your entities back in the Entity Designer, the better the UI light switch can generate for you. So let's go see how we can do that. So I've got the Entity Designer open here, and in the first video, we defined some basic fields and relationships for our entities, and that was about it. Um, as I mentioned, we did specify a, a couple business types, one for phone number and one for email address. Now, we can also specify for phone number any additional formats that we can accept for a user by clicking on the Appearance section here in the Property Sheet under Appearance, here we go, Appearance, Phone Number Formats. Now, if you have other types or other ways a user should be uh, allowed to enter a phone number, you can specify it here. You can also see how for phone numbers are validated as folks enter. So notice that you get no matches on three numbers, but once we get to seven, you'll see the dash is inputted in here. And then if we add another three, we get the area code and then et cetera, there's the country code. Okay, so I'm okay with these formats, but you just be aware that you can go ahead and change them if you need. What I do want to do to phone number, however, though, down the validation section, is I want to change the max length to 25 from 255. Notice when I do that, I get a warning down here at the bottom of the screen. Changing the phone max length from 255 to 25 may cause data truncation. This means that in my test database, if I have phone numbers stored in the field longer than 25 characters, they will be truncated. Okay, that's okay. We're just in the middle of developing our application, so I'm fine with that. Okay, so the other thing I'm going to do um, is email address, now that I have that selected, is I mentioned I wanted to specify the default domain. Now, I'm already requiring the email domain. You can, you can choose whether or not that's required. I, I do want it required, but I want to um, specify a default if I don't enter it. Okay, so there we go. 
A couple other things I want to do is for postal code, I want to also change the maximum length um, to 10. And for state, I want to change it to 2. Okay, so for state, what I want to do is I want to actually do a very, just a very small formatting on this state. Now we could write all kinds of custom validation on any of these properties and we will get to that in a future video. All you do is go down in here and click custom validation. Okay, so this, you know, can add any kind of business rules to your entity. But since we're just going to focus on formatting in this video, what I want to do is show you a little custom formatting that you can do on state. So go ahead and click custom validation for the state field. And you'll notice this is the first time we've seen some code in these video series. And all we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the state, um, actually we're going to just make sure if, if they, uh, you know, null, null or empty, if not, if not null or empty, um, the state, okay, then we're going to go ahead and say me.state equals me dot state dot to upper. Okay? So we'll just make sure anytime the user enters the characters in there that they go to uppercase. Now you could go ahead and write regular expressions and do pattern matching for instance. And like I mentioned, we will expand upon that in another video. But for now let's just make sure that whatever is entered, it's in uppercase. Now the next thing I want to show you is what's called a choice list. Now a choice list lets you limit the user to select to a selection of, of just valid choices for a field. So for instance, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add gender to the customer. Okay, and it's going to be stored as a string here, but what I want to do is I want to specify that this is only going to be valid two valid set of values for gender. Okay, one value is the value that is stored inside the database. Okay, and then the display inside of the of the field inside of the UI. Okay, so M for male. So choice lists are used when you have a very limited set of choices that must go into a field. Okay, now if you have like hundreds of thousands of choices, then that's called a lookup table in a lookup list, and we will show I'll show you how to create one of those in a in a future video. So if you but if you have a set of you know small amount of choices that are always, you know, like male and female is a perfect example, um, then you can go ahead and use a choice list for this. Yes, no, you know, yes, no, maybe, those sorts of things. Okay, choice lists are good for that. All right, so now we've got our gender set up as choice list. I'll make, go ahead and make it not required. Maybe not, we don't know who the, what the gender of our customer is. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, do one last thing. Now, I mentioned that um, on our search screen, we want to display the first name and the last name on that link. Now, what this is called, it's called, it's called a summary property of an entity. So you can think of this as like the string representation of your entity. And the way you specify that, is you select the uh, the title bar of your entity up here and then in the property sheet you can scroll down and you can see the summary property. Now by default light switch will select the first string that it finds inside of your entity as you're defining it. So in this case that would la that's last name. But I want a last name comma first name. So how can we get the summary property to display both of these things? So an easy way to do that is what we're going to do is an add what's called a calculated field and we'll call it full name. And this is going to be basically a computed field. Okay, calculated field, computed property, same thing. Okay, so I'm going to click on the button up here at the top, adds a computed field. Okay, property one is just the default name. You'll notice there's a little calculator here that means that it's calculated or computed. Okay, so full name. Okay, it is a string, and we're going to need to edit the method here. Okay, it is computed. We're going to need to edit the method. And what we need to do is we need to return a result. Okay, since the type is a string, we need to return a string. So all it's going to be, it's going to be a calculation of me dot. I want to just. I still want the last name to be there, but I want a comma first name. Okay, so now we we'll now the summary property. Now we just need to save that. Then we can go back to the designer, and now when we select the summary property and scroll down, we will see full name right there. All right? Very cool. So let's go ahead and run this. Hit F5.
and see what we get. Okay, so now what we need to do is when we click on our when we click on our customer, now you will see the summary property there in the tab up at the top is displayed. So Massey comma Beth is good. Um, the the only thing we need to do over on our search customer screen is add that summary property if we want it. So we can just dis design the screen, and instead of the uh, the first name here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, I'm going to add sorry a full name property instead. Okay, and we're just going to put this, whoop, put this up at the top. Okay, and then I'm going to uh, not show this one as a link, and I want to show this one as a link instead. Okay, that's cool. All right, so now we've got that, and um, and then you'll notice our search screen here. Uh, we've got Washington. Okay, so now if I lowercase, if I do lowercase like DD and tab out of it, there's our business role that ran. Okay, it's just formatting it. Okay, we didn't actually check it against any valid states, but we've got it formatted. So when you open, when you do a lowercase, you're always getting uppercase there. And like our, we did our email address, Beth M A. Tab off of it. There, it's entering the default domain. Okay, so now we've got some of the some of that awesomeness going on of our calculated or our um, sorry our uh, our uh, formatted fields. The other thing I want to do is I want to um, add the uh, yeah that's okay. I want to add in the gender onto this screen. So let's go ahead and uh, go to our role, rows layout here, and I'm just going to add the uh, the gender, and you'll see that in our list off here. Okay, and maybe we want to move it up right there under email address. Okay, so now when we save and we go back, we'll see that we've got this choice list. When we drop down, you got female and male, and if you just enter, you know, F, you get female automatically. Okay, very cool. Okay, so that's how you can um, you can use the Entity Designer to do a lot of the formatting that you need. And what's cool about this is anytime we create a new screen, that new screen will pick up the new fields and any of the formatting that we've applied. Okay, so thanks for watching.